Hello everyone. Today we are talking about very little children from birth to the age of 5 years. Now see the expression of a 1 year old child with her mother. Look how she is expressing by putting the hand on the mouth. See these little children in the pictures, how they are excited and they are confused also at the same time because at the new place they are not able to adjust very easily. When the children are requested to play together, so you can understand they soon form the peer group and start playing it. See how in the group, in a circle, they are dancing. When they are asked to run to a certain point, everybody is so ready. In this lesson, we will learn the basics of growth and development. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwar talking on this issue. It is my pleasure to have Mrs. Madhur Bhatia who is expert in the teaching of the growth and development of the young children. For many years, she is dealing with this age group. I welcome Mrs. Madhur Bhatia. Ma'am, please tell me what is growth so that our learners can understand better besides the definition of growth and development. So what is growth? Growth refers to quantitative changes in the body, that is, increase in height, body weight, body dimensions. The sequence, pattern and development of changes in the growth are common to all children, but they may vary from children to children. Growth and development are complementary processes, is it right? Yes. Okay. So, I define again what they can see in this picture, there is a little boy here who is crawling, then growing and by the adulthood see the height, this is progressive. But when we talk about the development, their development improves their thinking, but which we normally call the cognitive development. I define here the quantitative changes in the body, maybe in the body weight, height, and different types of circumferences which you will keep on learning in this lesson. When we are talking about the development, this is progressive series of orderly and coherent changes throughout life like language acquisition, emotional expression. See the child who is fearful, how he looks or she looks. When he is playing, how he looks or she looks. So, there is a emotional expression and with age, it keeps changing. So, this is a progressive series. Growth may stop at certain age, but development keep on increasing, changing throughout life. Now, I will talk about different stages in the lifespan. After the birth, there is an infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood and old age. Now we will talk about how many months, how many years are related to these different stages of human development. First I said the before birth which is also called as prenatal period that means in the womb or it is fetus that is called before birth and this is from conception to the birth which is about 9 months. When we are talking about childhood, we categorize into 4 stages. That means infancy that is equivalent to from 1 month to 2 years and from birth to 1 month is medically called as neonate. But next stage is early childhood that is 2 to 6 years, middle childhood when the child goes to the school that is 6 to 11 years and after that there is again drastic change we call it adolescence that is 11 to 18 years 
when we are talking about the adulthood again we try to divide into two early adulthood when the adult is getting mature that age is about 18 years to 40 years by that age the adult is mature enough and we call it middle age 40 to 60 years and after 60 years technically only old age is above the age of 60 years. So this is all stages of human development. Ma'am, can you tell me what is the process of development? As we have come to know that development involves qualitative changes in the body and it is difficult to measure development in comparison to growth. And it's a, since it's a complex process, so it involves interaction of the biological process, cognitive process and socio-emotional processes. The biological process that involves the changes in physical form, but they are associated with genetic heritage which we inherit from our parents. There is a growth in the body organs. When we are talking about the growth, it is always related to the physical body. Acquisition of motor skills, you will learn more about it. Motor means when you are using the fingers, arms or the peripheral organs to do any kind of activity and all these are related with the hormonal changes and those hormonal changes are very much high or fluctuating at puberty. When we are talking about the cognitive process that is related to thinking, intelligence and the language. So those are connected with the perception because everybody will have a different perception to the same thing. Attention, understanding, problem solving, memorizing and imagination. We keep imagination and everybody has a different imagination. Now the third one as ma'am told, socio-emotional processes. When the infant is starting smiling, everybody gets so happy. But that is the first sign the infant or the baby learns to communicate or start recognizing the people around. There is a bond between the mother and the child. Child learns to share, assert, take the turns one after the other. So he or she waits till their turn come. And he also like to play with others. So these are three things. Ma'am, can you tell me, is there any kind of interaction? Yes, all developmental process are integrated. Okay. And they affect each other. So we can say they are interrelated, they are interdependent. So I will explain this, how different processes are integrated with this picture and the story. When a child is by chance sick, every child sometime or the other gets sick maybe with the fever or cold or something or the other. So that is related to your physical condition that involves your biological process. When this is affected, this influences the emotional expression. He gets irritated, he or she cries when the child is sick and that again also influence social process that may fight, may react to something, may not like the other person. This is the social process. But when he keeps thinking but not able to concentrate, that is the cognitive process. So all sorts of processes are integrated. One affects the other. If the child is happy, it will reflect the every other process. If the child is sick, will turn into the irritability and difficulty to the concentration. Since now we have come to know that development follows a certain pattern. Can you please throw some light on the principles of development? It is very important to learn the basic principles. First, orderly sequence, individual differences, proceeds from general to specific, it is continuous and follows a fixed pattern, changes is the product of maturity and learning and development is predictable.
So these are seven principles of development. As now we have come to know about the principles of development, uh, we would like to know about the orderly sequence. What is orderly sequence? Orderly is very clear because the child has to learn first activity then only he can move to the second activity. As you can see in this picture, the first on the left hand side child is not able to sit. He is always lying and playing with the arms legs. As soon as the child gets strengthened in the back or the head muscles, then he or she starts probing the head. Then he has learned enough to sit independently, then crawling, walking and running. The child cannot run before he learns to sit. Yes, this is what an orderly sequence is. And we also know that there are individual differences uh, among children. Every child grows at her own pace. Two children cannot grow in the same pace or a speed or the height, whatever it is. They may react differently in the same situation. All children cannot smile at the time. All child cannot cry at the same situation. We should not compare. We should not compare. We should not uh, uh, try to judge on a single criteria among children. So this is a major, this is very important uh, principle of development. Now ma'am, please throw some light on uh, that development proceeds from general to specific. Yes, basically they are divided into two sequences. One is called cephalocaudal sequence and second is proximodistal sequence. In this two pictures also you can find on the left side is cephalocaudal when the growth is from top to bottom that means height. Second proximal distal sequence from the center to the outer or center of the body you grow the fineness towards the arm and the fingers. So I explain development proceeds from head to toe in second proximal distal sequence development proceeds from central of the body towards the extremities which are leg and the arms, fingers. So baby learns to use the arm first, then the movement of the finger. Uh, very beautifully explained that these are the principles of development which were really important to understand. One is we know that uh, a development never stops, our growth stops. So development is a continuous process and this is one of the very important principle of the development. Now we are talking about different factors affecting growth and development. We have also understood different processes, different relationship the child has to live in the society, in the world, with the mother, with the family members and keeps on growing, keeps on developing. So certain internal or external factors seriously affect the growth as well as development. What are those factors? Heredity, prenatal environment. Nutrition is very important. In undernutrition children or underweight children cannot develop or cannot grow to the optimal height, cannot obtain the optimal body weight, cannot mature enough in thinking, problem solving. And other factor is intelligence. When we see the children in the class, in any kind of situation, emotional climate of the home, this is a very big word, but what does it mean? That if the child is growing in the family where the, all the members are happy, then the child will also imbibe the happiness in his or her personality. All these factors we have talked about affect the health of the child. The level of stimulation, what does it mean? When the child is given any kind of stimuli, Maybe the touch, socio-economic status is also important and the gender of the child is important because the after a certain age, girls grow 
faster than the boys and that is more visible not till the age of 5 years. So these are factors affecting the development. So as now we have come to know that uh, heredity and environment including the physical and the social emotional environment of the child plays a key role in the development of a happy and healthy individuality of the child. And in developing the healthy and happy individuality of the child, taking care of the child is really very important. But in this very process of growth and development, we have learned that development is the product of maturation and learning. Now we will understand how these two processes combines to form an integrated personality. Okay, so first we will understand what is maturation and what is learning. When we talk about the maturation, maturation underlies the orderly sequence observed in the unfolding of many basic abilities. That means more and more anything is done. The, that ability is unfolded and the person or the child keeps on maturing. That is why we say that over the years of practice, the person or the child becomes more mature. But when we are talking of the learning, there are changes occur after the experience and practice. There is an integration or interaction always in the learning and maturation with the learning maturation occurs. In the very process of development, handedness plays a key role. Now we will learn about what is handedness and how it affects the development of the child. I think many people may not realize is there any kind of concept like handedness, but people must have observed or listened that some people work with the right hand some people work with the left hand and it is governed by your mind which hand will be used on a regular basis. So preference of the use of one hand over the other is technically called as handedness. Majority have the preference to use the right hand but some children prefer to use the left hand as the main hand. These children should not be forced to change to the right hand because it is governed by the brain. If it is a force, then it may adversely affect their brain activity, particularly the speech, handwriting and coordination. So left-handed children are equally intelligent and can do every kind of activity as the right and children. We all know that each child is unique and is endowed with certain inherent potentials and our duty is to unfold that inherent potential of the child. And in that very process of unfolding, we have to take due care of the children. Now we will learn about how we can take care of the children in which first point is proper feeding. When we are talking about the feeding, when the child is born, the first feed is the breast milk and first few days whatever the milk that has is cholesterol. Cholesterol is the first secretion of the mother's breast milk on child's birth. It is yellow in color, has protective antibodies which provide the immunity against certain diseases. It should be fed to the newborn should never be discarded because if this immunity is developed at that very moment will be used throughout the life. So why breast milk is important? The breast milk is easily and quickly digested. It has an ideal composition when we are talking of composition it is nutrient composition and the right temperature for the baby. It provides the emotional satisfaction to the mother and security to the child. First yeah. the child is 3 to 4 months old. The mother's milk is not sufficient to meet the child's nutrient needs. So at this age the child has to be gradually introduced the other foods which the family members eat. And this introduction to the top feeding that means the family food is called weaning. 
Now we are also using the weaning as complementary feeding the new word is used. In the beginning fruit juice but be careful never the juice only juice or the grape juice clear soups of vegetables and dal and it is followed by the little solidness of the mesh dal fruits and vegetable as the family prepares soups he paste custard etc and by the age of 1 year the child can chew because the teeth are also developing the raw vegetables chapati fruits etc now we have come to know that uh, a breast uh, feeding is highly recommended and it provides complete nutrition to the child apart from this there are certain other things which we need to take care of and among those are rest and sleep and we all know that rest and sleep are highly required for the proper functioning of the body now we will learn more about why rest and sleep is needed for a growing child it is important for growth and development because during the sleep the child gets strong healthy how the sleep pattern is there from the birth to the age of 5 years till the age of 2 months child may sleep 22 22 hours a day as the child grows from 2 to 6 month the time of sleep reduces at that age he or she sleeps 16 to 18 hours a day then again 6 to 12 months only 12 hours a day maybe in the morning or afternoon next till 2 years again 12 hours at night but small nap in the afternoon and after that only adult like sleep is there 8 to 10 hours including the nap in the afternoon now we will learn about the hygienic conditions of a child which will include bathing bathing a child for children it is important to bathe regularly to get not only the habit of regular bathing but it also improves the health it also improves the use of muscles and cleanliness before bathing massaging should be done with small soft hand and the baby should be bathed on the putting the hand and on the stomach rather than and we have to be very careful about the temperature of the water baby should never be bathed in the cold water there should be warm water now we will learn about how a suitable clothing helps the child everybody have some kind of cloth but we are talking about the softness of the fabric is important because if the fabric is harsh or rough it will affects the child skin the child may be irritable so the all the child's garment should be comfortable soft in texture absorbent material like cotton simple in design bright in color and easy to wash as the child outgrow in size quickly because this is the age they keep on growing the clothes size has to be changed there is no need to buy the expensive clothes for the children nappy or the diaper is very essential clothing for the baby it should be soft absorbent light in weight and the quick drying having understood the importance of bathing sleep and rest and suitable clothing now we will learn about what is immunization immunization first we must understand it protects the body from the diseases right from the birth all children should be immunized regularly as per the schedule against certain communicable diseases it increases the body resistance now from time to time new immunization schedule comes and the facilities are available at most health centers and hospitals and many of the vaccines are free let us see what is the updated immunization schedule there are lot of schedule which you can read out also 
but important is hepatitis which protects the baby or the children from the liver diseases from the polio chicken pox measles so these are the diseases which are communicable and can spoil the child's health from life so immunization is very very important so in this lesson we have learned all about what is growth development process of development principles of development and what is the importance of learning maturation in the age group of 0 to 5 years and we have also learned how to take care of the baby and the children with regard to their feed bathing clothing and rest and sleep thank you very much madam thank you so much